Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here with another idea that is is sort of new to me and sort of not. Let me show you. The other day I was watching YouTube and a random video popped up. I, I saw the thumbnail and really liked the thumbnail and it sparked my interest. Went and watched it and I spent, I think it was... I want to say somewhere from half an hour to 45 minute video that I watched and I really liked it. So I'm going to replicate what the woman made. I, I'm sorry I do not know her name because I've looked back on some of her videos and I don't think she ever says her name. Um, it is La Cafe Craft or Crafts. I will put the proper name down below in the description box. Um, and some of my video had to be refilmed because my darling neighbor child, the, the, my, my darling's darling neighbor's child, has a go-kart. When I try to edit and film, I hear the go-kart and behind me and the dogs barking, and then the other side, the TV's blaring. So some of it had to have a voiceover. And this is the part that I had to redo because of that. So. I'm going to show you the first portion of the video that I had to delete and I'm having to refilm. So in the beginning, the woman is talking about using these folders. And I thought, oh my word, I have hundreds of these things from when I had my personal chef business. And I used to order a lot from Quill Office Supply online. I mean, I have a ton of these things. So I thought, oh, that's the perfect idea for me because I can use some of these up. So you're going to get two pages be out of this one folder because you get one page from one side, one from the other. But the first thing you do is you take scissors or some kind of a cutter and you run it down the side to get rid of this thing right here. And I'm going to use this for a project later, the metal part. So. I wondered what was inside holding it together and it looks like it's either some kind of a double stick tape or a very thin line of some kind of hot glue and it just peels right out of there and then this is going to go in the trash. No, I'm not saving everything. All right, I got a ton of these now. All right, so you take that off of both sides. You cut down the middle. And this is the part right here where the next part of the video starts is how you um, start putting this together. And then I talk about the measurements. So keep going. Okay, in this portion, I have taken the two, um, two pieces that I cut and I'm putting them about an eighth of an inch apart. And then taking clear cellophane packing tape and taping it up. Once it's taped, run the bone folder in between to make sure that it's folded so that it will flip back and forth easily. All right, for this part, basically what you have just made is an eight by 10 accordion book. You know, you're used to making the little ones. Well, this is the one that's, that I've made into an eight by 10. So that's why you needed the cellophane tape to be run on with the bone folder so it would fold accordion style. I think I'm trying to explain here, oh, the measurements. I have the measurements here. The original part was cut in eight by 10, the green. Then the inside, it ended up being seven and seven eighths by 10 inches. Then I cut heavy duty scrapbook paper, which was almost like cardstock, into seven and three quarters by nine and three quarters, so that it will leave a small bit of the green showing around the edges. And then I take, I tried several different ways of gluing it down. I tried wet glue the first time and it made it too wrinkly. So then I used the ATG gun, automatic tape gun, to tape all the pieces of um, 
inside paper down on each one. Now you don't do the paper on the front or the back of the accordion because that's where you're going to glue or tape on the front covers. So what I'm doing is just taking a look at what's going to fit where and explaining to you not to do it on the front. And then each one of the sides has its own paper. I made it mix it. Uh, I used it from the same scrapbook paper um, collection. So they it would kind of match. And I made them as bland and nondescript as possible because of what's going to go inside. All right, so I accidentally glued one of the papers on the front after telling you not to do that. <laughs> so there's the cardboard, well, very light chipboard, lightweight chipboard that I use. I have found in my stash. And then um, that's what's going to be the, the front cover. So I wanted to cut it so that it slightly overlapped the green file folder so you can open the accordion book comfortably without the two the front and the back whacking each other when you open it up so there's the front and the back then i have to cut those down to size then you glue well that's the next part then you after you cut them down you take paper whatever kind of paper you want and you wrap it up on there I'm still, I, sorry, I jumped the gun. I'm showing you here <laughs> that there's a big gap in how I had to cut it down more than once because I didn't quite get the um, measurements correct. I cut it down by an eighth of an inch the first time, and that still wasn't enough. So then I had to cut it down a second time because I still had too much showing. I don't like the, the sides and the bottoms, one side and the bottom of the book's to be even with the cover because when you push them in and out on a shelf it tends to scuff up the bottom of your paper and the tops of your paper or the side of your paper from hitting the wall or the bookshelf from going in and out if it's something that you're working on and you put it away it it really takes its toll on the paper all right so here i am measuring an eighth of an inch which ended up being more like a fourth of an inch because i cut it twice Okay, here's the part I jumped the gun on before. I took two different printers and printed off the same file on them. And I'm showing you a comparison. They're both Hewlett Packard printers, but as you will see, they both print differently. So I'm showing you the oldest printer first where the red was really a wonderful vibrant red, but it showed didn't show the markings in the black where I had drawn the flowers or any of the shading. The red overpowered the black and it didn't show up very well. So then I ran it through the other printer that I have. Oh, I'm showing you a close up. You can't see the drawing very well of the black. It's not very pronounced. Then here is the second one on a newer printer. And the red is not as vibrant, but you can see where I drew the flowers. So every time you use a different printer, you're going to get some kind of a different result, even if it's within the same company like Hewlett Packard. One of the printers is very old and one of the printers is a newer printer. The first printer was a supposedly specializes in doing photos. And the second one's just a scan and print, print scan, print and copy. I was rather disappointed in the way things went, that the copies looked so different. And I couldn't make up my mind which one I wanted to use for the front cover, which one I used for the back cover. I liked them both because they both had good qualities, you know, love the red, but I wanted some of the flower to show. I like the flower showing, but I like the brighter red. All right, so you lay it down on your um, chipboard or whatever you're using, cereal box, whatever, and then I 
folded up the edges to make sure there was enough to go all the way around. I just put it on fast forward because it's just been in the paper back to make sure it fits. Then I'm going to glue it on there, making sure it fits on the folder itself. And there it is all glued on. I'm suggesting that you don't use wet glue for the project, that you use tape or something else because it left wrinkles in my paper and I'm not crazy after doing all that work about having wrinkles in my paper. So I did use um, matte medium on it and it didn't, it left wrinkles. And there's what it looks like finished on the, oh well, semi-finished on the inside. And then there's the back side when you flip it over to the other side. I think somebody called this the never-ending book, but I learned it was just called an accordion book. So when I started the project, I used scrapbook paper, like I mentioned, that was, eight, that was 12 by 12. And I did have strips of it left over, and I didn't want to waste the strips. So then I took the strips that were left over and cut each one into somewhere between one and a half inches to two and a half inches thickness, depending on how much paper I had left. I tried to get three strips of each one of the different kinds of paper I used. Since it was already cut in the proper um, width, they just fit right on there like a charm. I did take a corner rounder and I cut or clipped off two of the sides to round them off to make it just you know more pleasing to look at i did use wet glue for this because it wasn't a large space so i didn't really care that much about wrinkles and it doesn't wrinkle that much when it's a large a large area so then i just glued all of these onto the pages one by one and tried to do contrasting paper on each one of the pages I put that one upside down. There we go. Turn it right. <laughs> and then I'm showing you the spacing. You can space them any way you want for tall things or short things, whatever you desire. Now it's just gluing, gluing, gluing. I don't think I planned the different kinds of paper when I glued it on very well because at the back I had too many that were too close together to each other in colors. I was trying to get contrasting and I don't think I planned that very well. Nevertheless, I did not have very much scrap paper left over, which, uh, which pleased me immensely since I am trying to use up my supplies this year. I don't want to create more supplies. I'm trying to use, what, use up what I have. And I am throwing away little scraps of paper because, you know, I can only save so much because I only have so much space. All right, so I'm going to speed up the rest of this real quick. Okay, so I got all the pockets glued in. Only came close to miss gluing one. And I can't remember which one it which one it is, but one of them I almost didn't get in right. All right, so now I'm going to put things in here to show you why this is such a cool idea. Okay, now to the point of the whole book. 
I don't know about you guys, but I have a lot of ephemera that I'm keeping in plastic zippy bags and I have them in a drawer and I never think about them because out of sight, out of mind. But, let me start on this side. If I kept them in here like this where I can see them spread out and in these pockets, then I would be more inclined to use them. So these are store-bought ephemera. You can use tall ones, short ones. You can use these for tags, envelopes, whatever kind of stuff you want. All right, so that's those. You think you're done? No. Then you flip it over and here are my flowers that are in my Etsy store. So this is a very useful thing. You've got them out where you can see them and you can use them. I just thought that was a very clever idea. Let me see if I can get envelopes in here after I did after I said you could put envelopes in here. I've made some envelopes. They may be a little too tall. Nope. Look at that. It'll fit. But if you're gonna put other stuff behind here, it's you know, might stick up a little taller than that. Let me get my bag out here and see what I can put in here. Yeah, so you could put little shorter envelopes. Here, you know how you have those little tiny envelopes that you put ephemera in when you do your journals? So, smaller size envelopes will fit in here. If that's what you'd rather put in here, is stuff like this. And the reason the tape is so far apart is, look, it's starting to expand already. So you have room to grow or it'll be flat. I just thought that was a very clever idea. All right, so now I'm going to show you yesterday's mess. I mean, yesterday's effort. <laughs> All right, let's see. Here we go. Yesterday, I covered mine with... This is chipboard, and I wish now I had put that on this one, but c'est la vie. All right, so here's the front, and here's the insides. Now, the tape I did on this is Tyvek, and it's white, and you can see it in the spine. You can see the white. If it doesn't bother you, it doesn't bother you. I thought this time I would do clear like what the lady from the video used. She used clear packing tape. I used Tyvek on this one. And some of them I didn't have enough um, pockets or scraps left over to do pockets with. So I only put two on some of the pages. And these are all from the same um, scrapbook paper pad. And then Flip it over, and there it is. So this one has less in it, like less accordion folds, because I cut two of them off. I thought it was too long. So you have this on the back side. You're only actually getting six pockets on the back side, but on the front side, you're getting four. So. I really just thought this was a very, very clever idea. So here's Exhibit A from last night. Here's Exhibit B from tonight. And then I have one more thing to show you that's going to make you laugh. Now let me go get it. No, I did not make this. <laughs> this, um, a, a friend was talking about how she was putting things inside this. And so I got one, and this is basically, the uh, it's a postage stamp holder. And basically, it's the same concept. It's got little cellophane pockets across, he across here where you set your stamps up so you can observe your stamps. And then it has the lovely vellum paper that goes across them. These are postage stamps that I've had for 20 years that probably aren't worth diddly. Um, so I just thought that these two that I made are a variation basically of this. The only thing is, is you can only put little things, little short, basically shorter things in here, and you're not going to have, you know, eventually these vellum things are gonna stretch out. But I love that it has a little paper in it, and it's got tons of pages in it. So this costs $20 on Amazon, and so my husband would know what's inside the book, roped <laughs> in big letters with a Posca pin. So if he needs a stamp, he knows where to come to look for, for postage stamps. I was tired of telling him, dear, go look at my purse. Dear, look at my wallet. That's totally my fault. So now 
he knows where to get them. So please visit. I wish I knew the lady's name. She just has such an amazing site for me. If you're a, a maker, if you like making things and you like doing books and pockets and envelopes and all these other cool things, that's what's on her site. She has a lot of vintage looking things too. It's uh, La Cafe Craft. I will put the link down below in the description box so you can go show her some love. All right, everyone. Thank you for um, watching me in segments do this but the reason I did it the way I did was stop and start is because last time it took me a couple hours to film it and I spent more time trying to cut it down to 20 minutes and it just is impossible it was really hard to try to do that so I decided this was the best way to do it is to do it chopped up um, and in the captions, when I edit this, I will try to put the sizes in the captions down below where I show you what I'm using so that if you have to go back and watch the video again, the sizes are in the video, in the caption. Here's the other one. I think this they started out as both... Uh, these started out at... F I think these were supposed to be 5x7, but I think they're way larger than that. 7 seven by nine and a half <laughs> okay that's not a five by seven anyway <laughs> so there's two different versions of the book i suggest you use some kind of a chipboard a heavier cover because this warps with glue and you know it's if you're going to spend the time doing all this you might as well put a better strength cover on it but it does look lovely, though. I'm so pleased with the way it turned out. Very cool. $20 on Amazon. Use up your stuff. Make yourself one of these. Make your friends one for Christmas. Um, I think they'd make a lovely Christmas gift. <laughs>